God bless everyone tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to have some fun in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray that all is well tonight in the land of the living. We are here in Marrero. We're here in Marrero, Louisiana. We spent some time enjoying the fellowship. Hallelujah. With the people of God here, we love them. With the city of refuge and everything, so we decided to, to hang out for an extra day. <clears throat> so, what we want to do is we want to enjoy, experience the presence of God in greater measure. I want you to hear me tonight, everybody. It's important to note, to remember what we're going to talk about. We're going to ultimately talk about it, but I want everybody to realize that the anointing of God is portable. The anointing of God is not restricted to a specific location. And I think tonight, in addition to what we want to talk about, let's go to let's go to our favorite scripture, St. John chapter 4. St. John chapter 4. The anointing of the Lord, I'm gonna say is portable. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is portable. He goes, if, if, I'm not sure if I said not portable, but it is portable. Okay, St. John chapter 4, I believe it is. Now, we're going to tie this together in a nice little bow. Now, I would, uh, let, let's address something while we're on the line tonight. Here in the New Orleans area, it's slightly different from the, the feel that we get when we're in Patterson in that area. People by and large here is trifling. The fear that people have about the big bad coronavirus. That so much to the point where, now I've, we've seen illustrations where we live where people are riding in the car with the mask on, with the windows rolled up and nobody else is in there. That's ridiculous, that's dumb. And I have to be honest with it. Save door and say, that's stupid. But the thing about it is, is that when you when I was riding down Manhattan Boulevard, Manhattan Avenue today, people out on the street walking by themselves, walking their dog with the mask and stuff on. Really? Listen. Somebody say dumb, dumb, da dumb. That's basically what it is, because people people need to realize something. What the enemy is doing is promoting a narrative of fear and people are buying it hook line and sinker now believers believers, believers are doing it. now the thing about this that that bothers me is is that people are more concerned about the, the mandates that have been given from the powers that be but yet we've seen illustrations of hypocrisy i mean basically on the borders where people are allowed to come in and, 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 and they have all types of the, the COVID-19 going on and, and they're free to come across the border, which is hypocrisy. And we've got people here in the United States that are operating. I mean, it, they're like they don't have no spirit, no mind, no ability to be able to discern what is actually happening. If that was a big, if, if, if this is what it was, what it is, then the rules would apply for everybody across the board. Does everybody understand something? The rules would apply for everybody. That includes those that, are come, that come into the country. If, if the idea was restricting people and bringing everybody into alignment, why are we letting people go across the border who are pretty much with, with these things and they're being released without any restrictions? So what you have to understand is, is that you have to listen to a higher authority. You, I feel this in my heart tonight. You have to listen, amen. You have to listen to a higher authority. You have to understand what the will of the Lord is for you. You can't just blindly just do stuff because people tell you to do it. 
Now listen, listen. In the medical profession, they practice medicine. Listen, that's what they're doing, they're practicing. So you cannot legislate your life by people who hit and miss. At worst case scenario, people guesstimate as to how things are gonna play out in your life. When they prescribe medicine, they don't know for sure if it's gonna work. They try to see if it's gonna work. And when they deal with these things in the environment, they are anticipating how things are going to be and a lot of times they're wrong you cannot listen when you're being controlled by something that's hit and miss you're unstable and when you when you get when you pattern your life off of stuff that's unstable what it does it puts you in a place where you you, you understand you're driven by fear you're driven by uncertainty when you're in the kingdom of god there is a certainty Remember, when you're in the kingdom of God, there's no hitting and missing in the kingdom of God. When you get your instructions from God, it's a sure thing because God will not lie to you. What we've learned from experience, well, people will lie for you, lie from, lie to you with a straight face. Now, we we've been accessed to, we've seen some video of some stuff where what they're what they're trying to make them fix it where you don't you can't see what's happening on the border and they've been told not to allow the media in in order in order for people to see the truth and a lot of dumb stupid idiots out here are believing a narrative because they don't have no discernment now listen people who are not born again we get that they, that they, they, they don't have any discernment and i'm not just saying it to be mean that's just a that's just a fact they don't have any discernment but believers Believers who have Jesus on the inside of them. There is no excuse for the believer. Does everybody understand that? This is going to be the greatest opportunity for the remnant to stand forward and walk in discernment. We need discernment more than anything. And we need to allow the Lord to open our eyes to the things that are happening. Now, for those that listen to us that think that we're not supposed to be involved in political stuff, you haven't read your Bible. The Bible is full of confrontation between the men and women of God and the powers that be that were leaders, the governments, hallelujah, people that govern. So what we have to do is get you into an awareness of what is happening and what the enemy is trying to do through this. Now, listen, it's the enemy. Let's be clear on who our enemy is. The enemy, the devil, hallelujah, works through people. So. The biggest, so again, let's reemphasize this. Now, you see our backdrop here, grateful. <laughs> Listen, we're so grateful. So, li- that we know God. Listen, you have to understand that discernment is going to be very paramount in these last days. You're going to have to be able to, to, to navigate from what is being said. In other words, you got to hear with your spiritual ear because people are lying to you with a straight face. And, and, and the thing about it is that Christians, oh my God, I feel this tonight. Christians need to be able to know what the will of God is. You're not taking your marching orders from people who are trying to, to legislate things based upon science, but ultimately it's about manipulation. We're finding out stuff as we go along of, of how this is going and and it's not as as it appears so what you want to do right now is that you want to be able to know what god is saying for you at this time in your life what is the will of god concerning you how are you supposed to navigate when you hear things you cannot worry about what your neighbor is doing if they if they don't have a revelation you can easily get frustrated trying to get people to see something that they don't have have the insight to be able to recognize and even if you can show that to them let's be real some people are going to just be deceived that's just the bottom line some people are just going to be deceived and you got to accept the fact that every everybody like I said people can hear the word of god right you can preach the word of god to a thousand people everybody's not going to get it everybody's not going to get it so when you look at scripture, we see that 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 the word is going to fall on all different types of ground. All right. So 
if you're one of those people that are being fruitful by what is being heard, you're blessed. You're being blessed, but do not get yourself overly overwhelmed by people who do not get it. So again, so we're going to tie this together in a nice little bow tonight, like only the Holy Ghost can, because again, we I saw front and center today what was going on. I went into the vitamin shop today, and what had happened was is that <laughs> the lady confronted me and asked me about a mask. I told her we pray for people to be healed of, I mean, of, of, of the coronavirus stuff. She wasn't hearing all of that. She wasn't hearing all of that. And then she said, even if her own mother came in, and I quote, I would make her wear a mask. So like I said, that's, that's a direct quote from her. Everybody's not where you are. Yeah, so for, for, for this thing. Yeah. I but I'm telling you the 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 the, the 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 urgency of the message of Christ that has to come out because fear yeah. has governed people. Yeah. Intelligent people in one sense are walking around in the car by themselves with the windows rolled up and looking like a bandit on the walk track. And again, I think I've said this before. We saw one running around the track in Patterson. What, 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 what? It looked like a respirator. It looked like one of those gas masks. It, yeah, it looked like a gas mask that I wore when I was going through boot camp. And, and he was running and he was out of breath. He had to stop. Yeah, I said, revive him. I said, really? So, this is how stupid the devil is making people look. This is how stupid the devil is making people look. Think about that. We have to put our trust in this We need to put our trust. If we're believers and we say we believe God, we need to be all the word of God. Amen. And everybody is not at a level that they truly believe that God will protect and keep them. Amen. Amen. So, you know, it is what it is, honey. But as believers, we need to come up. That's what you're saying. Our way of thinking. We need to think according to the word of God as Jesus does. What, 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 what would it, Jesus, what, what would he have done? If they told him to put on a mask. No, he touched, you remember the lepers? You don't touch a leper, correct? Oh, yeah. Amen. But Jesus touched the lepers. <laughs> he did what they said you could not do. Amen. Oh, oh yeah, ba, ba, ba. Oh. He did what they said you're not supposed to do. Because he knew that if he touched that leper, that leper, he knew that that leper was going to be cleansed. Amen. Amen. He had the power. We have the power within us. Amen. But we have to believe it. We have to activate what God has already put in us. We have to believe that we have that authority that God has given us and act on it and walk in it. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We have to. We have to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Because God's word is true. He has not changed. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus is in me. If he's in you, hallelujah, you have just what he is. You have his DNA in yourself. Hallelujah. And then you say, greater work shall he do. Hallelujah. Because he goes to the Father. Hallelujah. And we have just what he put in us. We are a duplicate. We are made in his image. That means an exact duplicate of who he is. Ha ha! The Holy Spirit in us. Ha ya ba 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 ba. Ha The Holy Holy Ghost in us. Hallelujah! Is Jesus? Ha! Oh, it is God. Jesus. Ha! No 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 bullshit. But if we don't realize what we have and we're not activated in that, we are going to fear. Ha ya ba 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 ba. Ha! We are not going to stand on the word of God and do what thus says the Lord because we don't believe as the scripture said. And I thought about it just now. Hallelujah. He said the word. The word was not mixed with faith in them. We have to have the word of God mixed with faith. The faith of God. Not that faith, but the faith of God. Hallelujah. And if the faith of God is in you, you believe just what he say and you act on it. 
Oh, glory to God. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be calm. Hey, hallelujah. I'm trying to stay seated. Oh, my God. All right, give me some Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Oh God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We're tired of fear. Allah, Allah, Allah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We're tired of fear. We're tired of fear. Yes, Lord. Thank you. They're being used as a child. They're being used as a child. People who say My God, Jesus. It's time for us to come up. We have to rise above a whole lot of stuff. And we have to just believe what thus says the Lord and act on it. Be activated in the word of God. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to help you. <laughs> Woo, help me to believe. Oh, Jesus. Let the man, hallelujah, say, I believe he wanted healing, right? Oh, Amen. Lord. He said, I believe, but Lord, help thou my unbelief. Hallelujah. Oh, hey. You can believe and still have unbelief because oh, your belief level is not where it needs to be. Oh, you shut up. And that's what we need. Lord, help thou my unbelief. Hallelujah. I want to just believe you totally. <laughs> Totally, hallelujah. And when you can believe God totally, you can have what you say. Ha, woo, glory to God, hallelujah. You can have what you say according to the word of God and according to the will of God. If line up with his word, it's his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. No, he has not. The spirit of fear, mm. love, power, power, love. love. Oh, my. Amen. Now, oh, my God. We have to understand. Amen. That if you're operating in fear, it does not come from God. Mm -mm. Now, you may say, Apostle Young, we got to use what you said. Now, which wisdom are we going to use? Hey. The wisdom of this world, oh, which no, comes no, from no, us, no. or the wisdom that comes from God, Amen. which confounds mm -hmm. the foolishness of God, I mean, what is wise in the midst. Amen. Listen, <laughs> you need to understand mm. that we have to operate by revelation. When I say revelation, I operate by what the heaven tells me in, in context to what has happened. In Amen. Earth. This is why you need your own relationship. Amen. When you listen to the lukewarm people and let them dictate oh. what is going on, yeah. you're going to find yourself walking in unbelief. Uh. And when you walk in unbelief, you're in and out of society. Does everybody understand that? If you're around people who don't have any faith, don't have any power, don't have any understanding, of what the kingdom is, you'll find yourself doing things based upon the environment that you're in. The environment that you're exposed to is going to create your way of thinking. Now, I think this is important for, for this reason. If you're in an atmosphere of doubt and you don't have a spirit that can transform what is happening, and I'm going to tie this together to, 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 to what people I mean, criticize Jesus for it that he hung out with publicans and sinners. And some people will even pattern their sermons about it. Jesus was out there hanging out with sinners and publicans, but Jesus was not transformed by them. He was bringing about change. He was bringing about change. He was not, some people will use the excuse where they can hang out in the bar where that's what Jesus did. Really, listen, Jesus was not, was not being brought down to their level. Jesus was there to transform the lost, their thinking. So don't don't misinter don't misquote scripture, and don't try to paint a narrative of weakness with Jesus, because that's not true. The Jesus that we serve, we love, and we worship, He's all powerful. That's not a cliche, beloved. It's not. You need to know that we're in a place right now where we have to be transformed. And, and let's go back to the point that I was making a few minutes ago. If you're around people who do not have any faith, if you're around people who do not have any power with God, if you're around people who do not have any revelation, then you're in a place where you're, you, where the probability of you getting the wrong information and walking in the wrong information is much higher. And, and, uh, and the thing, if you're, God has called us to reach 
doesn't reach the lost. And sometimes that lost can be people who are in the church. You need to understand that sometimes people are in the church and they're just as lost as somebody who, who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. <laughs> If we deal with Jesus from the standpoint that he was an ordinary man that did not have any power and stuff like that, you're gonna the type of Jesus that, that you believe that you believe in is what's gonna be activated in your life. That's just the bottom line. And it's a tragedy for people who are in church hearing what's supposed to be the word of God and are not transformed. And they're not walking in a greater dimension of the awareness that they need to have in a time that the world is declaring a crisis situation. And we're not just talking about what's happening at the border because we already know the media's lied about that and said that there is no crisis when there is. Amen. We already know that we've got the, we've seen the footage. All right, we've seen the footage and we've also seen that they've tried to suppress it. Now, the reason why this is important tonight is because as believers, the enemy is making a the bold step to try to deceive you. It's not being hidden anymore. We know that ultimately the devil is at work, but there's a direct move to try to see people to get you to believe a narrative. As kingdom people, as children of God, you have to be able to walk in a deeper revelation. You can't, in other words, I'm gonna say it like this, you can't believe everything. Mm -hmm. You can't, be, you can't believe what people are trying to make you see. Some things you can see and people are trying to tell you that it's not what it, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's manipulation. That's lying. That's trying to promote a narrative. And I think what we need to understand as Christians, well, you got to understand that the powers that be do not have your best interest at heart. Even with situations, even the, even, like I said, even with some of the stuff that that's being, that's happening in the government, the enemy's at work trying to promote an agenda and trying to usher in the agenda of the Antichrist. You need to understand that. You, oh, I feel this tonight. They're trying to usher in the, the agenda of the Antichrist. You, we cannot be passive as believers. You can say, well, Apostle Young, that's what the word says, prophecy says that this is gonna happen, all right. But many times people will have a passive approach with prophecy and allow things to be fulfilled when it was never God's timing to do that. Does everybody understand that? We still have a battle against the powers of darkness. The powers of light, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God still has an agenda here on the earth. There's people that need to be reached for the cause of Christ. There needs to be manifestations of the power and the presence of God in the earth right now. Some people are, are, are planning their futures like they're going to be here forever. No, li listen, things are changing. And you need, and each day that we, that our feet hit the floor brings us closer to the return of Jesus. And you need to understand that the Lord is going to return. We tell you tonight that the Lord is going to return and you need to get yourself ready and be on guard and be in your assignment. Hear me clearly tonight. What is your divine assignment in the kingdom of God? What is your divine assignment tonight? What is it that God has called you to do to make an impact before he returns? Listen, this is a very powerful time, beloved. So we're gonna tie this together. It's important for every one of you on this line and this applies to all of us. You need to get some power. You need to grow in power and grace on a daily basis, every single solitary day. Now, before we go into what we wanna talk about tonight, let's be clear on this. When people reach out to us in prayer, they reach out to us with the anticipation that we're gonna come into agreement with them for something to happen. But I need to tell you quite candidly, there's lots of things that go on behind the scenes before we ever receive a prayer call, before we ever do a Zoom cast. There's lots of fasting that goes on, lots of prayer. 
And there's times that we fight against the powers of darkness ourselves. Does everybody understand that? You have to you have to come to a place right now, and I, and I need to tell you this, that because you're walking in the kingdom, you're going to be a target, a bullseye. You're going to have to learn how to shake off the attacks of the devil. That includes physical attacks on your body. That includes attacks in other areas. You're going to have to be able to rebuke some things. And let me give you a word of advice. Those of you that are going to be preaching anywhere, make sure you take some time to set the atmosphere before you go to a place. Start taking authority over stuff within the realm of the spirit before you go to a place. Because you don't know if you're in the presence of witches or warlocks or anything like that if you're going to go out there and preach. You need to make sure that you set the atmosphere. Arrest the powers of darkness before before you administer. Arrest them. Make sure they are subject, they are subject to the power of God. That's some wise instruction for, all, for everyone that's on the line tonight. If you're going to minister, before you go out into the streets and do any type of ministry, you make sure you pray in the spirit Amen. and you make sure you take authority of anything, seen or unseen, and have a fasted life. And have a fasted a life. My God, a fast life. Amen. Fasted, not fast life. <laughs> a fasted life. A life of fasting in prayer. Amen. Let me put it that way. A life of a lifestyle of fasting in prayer. Because that's where the power, <laughs> amen, of God, God he is uh, uh, activated in fasting and in prayer, amen, mm -hmm. together. Because <laughs> if, if you're just fasting and not eating and not praying, it's just, you're just missing a meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you're fasting, you're you're seeking the face of God, hallelujah, that's the power of God. Hayashata, huh? The power of God, amen, is activated in you, amen. And when you come before anything or anything come against you, hey, hey, my God, you've already made yourself ready. Ha, ha. Amen. Yes, God, amen, in Jesus' name. Mm. Now, for every one of you that are on this line tonight, now, as we do the Zoom cast tonight, there's a, there is apostolic and prophetic anointing that's being released across the field. Thank you, Jesus. Now, for the segments that we do during the course of the week, I want you to understand the wisdom behind what, what is happening. In addition to what is being preached or taught, and I want you to hear me clearly, this is the reason why we want you that even if you don't necessarily physically look at the video, to allow that anointing to play through the house. I mean, there's a lot of people that think they're smarter than, than, than the strategies that God gives us. And some people feel that, that it's not in the best interest to listen to stuff or to, to be a part of stuff. But then when they don't, they want to call us in prayer and, and need prayer. When all they need to do is listen to stuff. Now listen, it's important for you to understand what's happening right now because even when you're in the will of God, you're going to deal with attacks. Does everybody understand that? Let's be clear. Even in the will of God, you're going to have to fight attacks and know how to shake these things up. But understand the wisdom of what Apostle Gary tell you right now. I'm an apostle whether anybody likes it or not, we don't care. The reality is, is that when we release the videos and the Zoom cast and we put them out there, we're not just giving you the word, we're giving you a marriage between the word and the spirit. So when we teach and preach, we teach under the grace that God has given us to teach and preach under. So therefore you become a partaker of that. All right. There's lots of people that go to church every Sunday or go to church wherever they go and they, they are not able to be a partaker of the grace and the anointing that comes from, from an apostle or a prophet. They don't get that. And you can tell by what happens in your lives. They don't get that grace. And I'm not just saying that just because of who, who apostle young is. I'm talking about the ministry of the fivefold, the, the ministry of the apostle and the prophet is necessary for people to grow. So when so when, when we put the Zoom cast and we put these things out there, you're receiving of the word and the grace and the revelation that comes from the fivefold ministry, from the ministry of the apostle. And these things are necessary that have, according to Ephesians 4, to build you up. If you don't get a consistent diet of this law, along with the pastor, along with the evangelist, along, along with the prophet and stuff like that, you are now nourished spiritually. The teacher. the teacher, you are now nourished spiritually. You, People have pastor, pastorified the church. So much so that everything is a pastor. And that's why the devil is beating the church. Come on, come on. Because all they get is the grace from the pastor and the teacher. 
and they don't get the grace from the apostle, they don't get the grace from the evangelist, they don't get the grace from the prophet, they don't get any, they don't get the common And they all make up the hand of God, amen. They, they all, all make up God. the hand, amen. And then when you ball it up, it's a fist, it punches the devil in the eye. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. Ooh, glory. Listen, we have people that are intimidated the devil of us from the Because listen, you gotta understand this witnesses of God, we have to deal with truth. So when we say that people don't have any power, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And I'm not the only one that has ever said that. I mean, listen, power is something that we all need. Jesus told the disciples not to do anything, not to go into it until they were to do with power. So, so, so <laughs> oh, why are we tripping when we say stuff? Because the true essence is, of course, you know, I don't be a boss, you don't know what he's talking about, but I'm like, this is not up for dispute. You don't have anything to prove to me. Listen, well, you don't have anything to prove to me, but the devil knows whether you got power or not. And listen, he's going to test you on it. He's going to test you on it. When you start tearing that tail up, I mean, listen, you're going to get power one way or the other. Either you're going to get it on this side or you're going to go to an early grave. That's just the The way it is that's just the way it is this is not a time to play church you need to be all in so rather than to fight the messenger who's speaking as as god's representative for your edification sometimes edification does not always mean that god's going to have a lot of nice things to say about you you couldn't have been in the church that i came out because people would be worship leaders the people who were singing was rebuked in front of everybody i was rebuked more than once in front of the whole congregation call by name call by name in new jersey you want to talk about listen this modern generation of people want somebody to always preach something nice to them but you know the, the devil let you hear the nice stuff and then beat them beat the bobby socks off you and then, then all the listen all and all the people that you that you classify as crazy that they're too serious. The ones that, that you gravitate to can't get the can't get a prayer through. They can't do anything. They, they can't. And I think that's important. So when people separate themselves from those that are walking in the light, you have to listen, I beg of you. You have to be different. You have to be different now. You have to be radical. You cannot be worried about offending people more than God. Because at the end of the day, they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but God certainly does. And listen, what is happening right now, and this is the, the thing, when we deal with the divine connections, I think this is important. There's people that separate themselves from us because they think we're too serious. So, and, and, and that's fine. Because we sleep good at night. We need our sleep so we can meet the Lord early in the morning. So we don't want to be up all night worrying about stuff. <laughs> so listen here. Hear what we're saying tonight. Let's go do instead of um, acknowledging that they have a that they have a problem, they, what they want to do is they want to stone the messenger. They want to lie on the men and women of God. And you got to be careful about doing that. That happened to Jesus. We're in good company. Oh, I feel the fire tonight. Oh, I feel the fire tonight. Oh my God. They're gonna do this. They did it to him. You need to hold on to that tonight. Because, because BC before COVID, <laughs> listen, like before you have BC before Christ, BC before COVID, people had a certain posture. And until it was tested, everybody was okay with it. that we have to be honest with our belief system Come on. is if what we believe is what we believe. 
You are, you are entitled to hold on to whatever opinion you have, even if it's not based upon the word of God. But you need to be advised of this, that whatever happens as a result of what you hold on to, let me ask you this, are you willing to deal with the consequences? There's either going to be rewards, benefits, or consequences behind your belief system. So let's tie this together tonight. St. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to start at verse number 4. Hallelujah. And we're going to read up. We're going to read up the first, the verse number 10 first, and then we'll, then we'll go from there. St. John chapter 4. Starting at verse number four, read up, read up to verse number 10, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. And he... Talk about Jesus. I'm going to start at three. Okay. okay. And he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which was called Sarker, near to the parson of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For, the, for his disciples was gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of, of Samaria unto, unto him, which is Jesus, how is it that thou, being a Jew, asked thou a drink of me, which am a Samaria woman? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, hallelujah, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Continue reading. Amen. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep. From whence then thou hast that living water? Thou art greater than our father Jacob, which have us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. <laughs> but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of, of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Stop right there for right now. Amen. Now, she's having an encounter with Jesus and does not recognize him yet. Does everybody understand that? She's dealing with things from a natural perspective. And she's seeing this. She's seeing our Lord, but she don't recognize that she is truly about to encounter something. And when she's dealing with Jesus, she's dealing with Jesus, and we've said this from time to time, from her point of reference, talking about the, the living water. Jesus is talking about suffering that, that spiritual. is spiritual, <laughs> and she's answering him and dealing with him based upon her understanding. So I think it's important to understand that as we go forward. Jesus is about to transform her life now. Jesus is at a time of resting at the well. But he's in a place where we see the operation of the spirit Amen. In, 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 in a less than traditional type set. Does everybody understand that? Where he's not seeing the move of God in what we classify a church setting. But we see a situation, oh, I feel this now. We see a divine encounter that's getting ready to be facilitated because of, 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 of this encounter between the woman of Samaria and Jesus. And he's talking about this living water. He's not talking about a natural water, he's talking about a water. That will that will that will be a continuous refreshment, and I feel this tonight for somebody right now. So she says in verse number fifteen, she says, "Woman, the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, 
neither come hither to draw. Now, this is where the divine counter starts to take on spiritual, I mean, spiritual, um, I mean, I mean, entity, right? It takes on the spiritual context. Watch this. Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come hither. Watch this. And Jesus answered and said, no, and the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands, and whom who thou now hast is not is not thy husband, in that thou said is truly. Now, check this out. Now listen, let's let's dispel the, the myth that God does not speak to sinners. You need to understand that God does in fact speak to sinners. And not only did God speak to a to a Samarian woman who was in the midst of shacking. She was in Mr. Shacking, but operated in the gifts of the spirit. The word of knowledge came forth. So there's lots of teaching out there that will say that God will only speak to a sinner in regards to salvation. Where do they get this stuff from? It's right here in the scripture where we see a manifestation of the spirit of God who somebody who did not have the covenant of God. Now, now remember, the Samaritans were considered half-breeds. They was considered people that was not part of a pure race. Anyone that was outside of the Jew, Jewish um, uh, acceptor or considered That's uh, right. common and unclean. Common and unclean. But yet Jesus administered to them from the realm of the spirit. So let's break down some misconceptions about how God can and will administer. So go on, go on to what she said. She said, <clears throat> so now Jesus makes a statement in verse number 18. The word of knowledge is coming forth. Now, all of a sudden, in verse number, number 19, she says, Woman, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, like I said, it's, a, it's an easy read at this particular point. Now, watch this how she changes the subject. She said, Our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now, I want you to understand something. She's dealing with worshiping God based upon a location. She's dealing with it based upon a specific place, whether it's in Jerusalem or on the mountain. Now, Jesus <clears throat> is now going to answer her based upon a kingdom perspective. He's take Jesus is taking her from a specific location to mean to, to, to taking the whole limits off of Jerusalem or the mountain and putting them where they need to be. Now, watch this. Verse number 21 says, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So we're taking the eyes off a specific location, right? You worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So Jesus is talking about his point of reference, and he's trying to get her to, 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 to see things from his point of reference. Right. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seek of such to worship and now watch this verse 24 says for god is a spirit so a spirit is not confined to a specific location Amen. god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth that is powerful so we see the transition right now we see the transition where god is taking people from from focusing on a specific location and in a specific specific building mountain or case and help me understand that when we worship god we're gonna have to worship him in spirit and in truth the spirit cannot be confined to a specific location so for those of you that, that when you understand this you know that you can you, the spirit of god can manifest himself anywhere that you allow him god seeks those that will worship him. This, this is Jesus saying, he seek those, he seek. And he is a spirit, amen. And the Holy Spirit, his spirit is in us if we receive him. As believers, we receive the Holy Spirit He's in us, amen. And so therefore, anywhere we go, his presence goes with us, amen. We need to know that, amen. We need to know that the presence of God, presence of God dwell in us. And everywhere we go, his spirit is there, amen. To minister any and everywhere we go, amen. 
Amen. And I think that's important Hallelujah. tonight. Mm. Remember, the anointing and the power and the presence of God is portable. It's portable. And that's the message we want you to get tonight. Again, we want to cancel the assignment of any fear. And we want to release an anointing over you in the name of Jesus tonight. We want you to walk in the power Hallelujah. and the presence of the Spirit yes. of God. We want God to Hallelujah. confirm his word in you with signs following as you lift your hands before the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Ooh. we thank you for the anointing that is moving in every house and every home right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we cover every. I feel the presence of God as we pray Hallelujah. right now. Thank you, Lord God, Ooh. that they receive the benefit of this apostolic anointing and prophetic authority tonight. In the name of Jesus, we change the atmosphere in every home. In the name of Jesus, we change that atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we declare, oh my God, I feel your presence, oh God. Lord, I feel healing right now. We want to hey, release healing right now. Lord. In the name of Jesus. Mashallah, we change Lord. the atmosphere in people's bodies God. and in their spirits. God, we declare Lord. deliverance tonight. In the name of Jesus. We declare. Oh, we feel the presence of God tonight. Thank you, Lord God. My Let the healing power the spirit of unbelief right now in the name of in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that activation, hallelujah, to believe your holy word and take you at your word, hallelujah, will be granted, hallelujah, that it will take hold, anyone will take hold and hear what thus says the Lord, what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, hallelujah, open up the, their spiritual ears, open up the spiritual ears, the dumb, hallelujah, hallelujah, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. the ones that dull of hearing, hallelujah, open it up, Lord, open up ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, even now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cannot obey anything that the Word says if we don't hear. We need to hear God. Hallelujah. We need God. Time out for play. Hallelujah. We are in the time. It's serious. We are in the very end of the end times. Hallelujah. And God is calling all. He is calling all. Hallelujah. That believe in him to take more of a serious uh, posture in him. Hallelujah. Take a serious posture in the Lord. Oh God, he said, call upon him while he's near. Hallelujah. Oh, let the sinner forsake his way and the righteous man. Hallelujah, shall his thoughts and draw near unto the Lord. Hallelujah, for he shall abundantly pardon. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We still oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Listen, pray for us. We expect God to do something powerful and we expect God to do something like change. We expect God to do simply be himself. And I think that's important. And, and we can't be happy, we can't, we can't be no happier than that. When God can have the full manifestation of who he is, wherever we go, we want to see the atmosphere change. We, oh my God, we lift our hands before you, Lord. We give you the praise, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence, oh God. Oh, I feel the power of God right now. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we can, and Lord, go before us, oh God. We can, we cast aside everything that would bring a hindrance in Jesus' name. We declare victory right now. We declare the blessing of the Lord over everyone that make a rich 
We want to thank every one of you that have been praying with us. And 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 prophetess had a very powerful time in Lafayette. Amen. The Lord moved there. there. Thank you for everyone that prayed. Thank you for everybody that prayed. We appreciate. We humbly thank God for you and all and all God has used you to do. We love you. We want you to have a good night in the Holy Ghost, everybody. We are going to record this. We know it is recorded, but we're gonna we're gonna put it together. We'll have it coming to you in a very timely fashion. We love you tonight. Have a blessed night in the Holy Ghost. We will talk to you guys again in the very near future. Good night. Sleep good in the Holy Ghost, everybody. God bless you. Amen. Be blessed. Thank you.